Hey YouTube, it's Sebastian, KF5OBS. Today I'm going to talk to you about a very simple and inexpensive modification for any handheld radio that will significantly improve your receive and transmit performance. What I'm talking about is commonly referred to as a tiger tail or red tail. It's a little wire that you add to your handheld radio that's basically a adding a little bit of a counterpoise to your normal rubber ducky antenna on here. I don't know how well you can z see it at the zoom level, but uh, it is uh, just a simple wire on a crimp connector hanging on the SMA connector for the antenna. That's really all it is. However, some people have asked how to make it and uh, exactly what parts to use, so I thought I'd shoot a quick video on it. So what you see here is all the parts and tools needed to make one of those tiger tails for your radio at home. You're gonna need some wire, you're gonna need a ring terminal, you're gonna need a crimp tool of some sort, doesn't have to be as fancy as this one, but you're gonna need a crimp tool. You're gonna need something to measure the wire length, you're gonna need uh, wire strippers and wire cutters, and uh, why you need a calculator I'll explain in a second. First off, I'm not sure how well the camera actually zoomed in on the tiger tail when I showed it in the intro, but here as a close-up shot of this, this is the ASO VX8DR, which I use primarily for APRS. And uh, you see that this ring terminal, which is uh, exactly the same as this, is just uh, locked in there by the antenna on the SMA connector. Fits very well on this radio, it's in there very snug, and that's what you want. So uh, if on your radio there's too much space, you may want to fill this space with like a lock washer or something like that. Uh, but you want this to fit tightly. And well, here it goes out to the wire and that's all there is to it. No black magic, just a wire and a ring terminal. So uh, the wire that I'm using is uh, 14 AWG for the people that live in the imperial, empirical world, but uh, for those in the metric world, this is 1.6 millimeter wire. Uh, this crimp terminal is a standard off-the-shelf uh, ring terminal that you can find in any uh, automobile store and uh, this is true for all around the world. The color coding depends on what size wire you're gonna use. So there are yellow ones, there are red ones, it will depend on your uh, diameter of wire that you're gonna use. And uh, so why do I have a calculator here? Well, one thing that needs to be said is that this tiger tail is uh, designed specifically for a very narrow frequency range. It's a tuned element, it's a quarter wavelength long, and uh, accordingly you cannot use it for a wide range of frequencies. So you need to do the math and figure out how long your tiger tail needs to be. And since this video is going to have viewers all over the world, I'm going to show the math because the uh, repeater frequencies or in generally the amateur radio frequency allocations are not the same all over the world. Um, they are actually quite different as far as the higher frequency bands like 2 meter and 70 centimeters are concerned. So in my case, I'm using 147 megahertz, 147 megahertz as my reference point because for me the most important repeaters up here are right around that uh, frequency range. There's the uh, 147.150 megahertz uh, Cabot Stars Club machine and uh, then there's the uh, 146.970 machine of the Faulkner Amateur Radio Club. Those are kind of the most important repeaters for me, so accordingly I'm positioning myself somewhere around uh, 147 megahertz uh, for the math of this tiger tail. So let's get started with the math and let's clear the screen and start from scratch. And uh, I apologize to all Americans, but I'm doing this uh, in millimeters and meters and everything else uh, that has nothing to do with the units you use, but it's okay, I'll show you the conversion in the end. So after you pick your frequency, like in my case 147 megahertz, you divide 300 by that frequency and you get the wavelength of meters. So in this case we have a wavelength of 2.04 and after rounding 1 uh, meters. And to get a quarter wavelength, quite obviously we divide this by 4. And uh, if we multiply this by 100, we're getting the quarter wavelength in centimeters. So quarter wavelength for 147 megahertz is 51 centimeters. And uh, now I'd like to stress that electrical length and uh, physical length is two different stories. And I have found that for this tiger tail, 
for it to work perfectly you want about uh, six seven percent overhead um, so um, in my case let's let's just do the math and tag on uh, about six percent we get 54 centimeters and this is exactly what I'm cutting off 54 centimeters it's exactly how much wire I use and uh, you're gonna see how well of a choice that is uh, after we get done with building one of these I'll hook it up to the spectrum analyzer and we'll look at the performance so 54 centimeters would be uh, the correct length for the wire used in the tiger tail if you want to transmit somewhere around 147 megahertz now for you Americans let's uh, divide this by 2.54 to get the same length in inches which is 21.29 and uh, again you want a little bit of extra uh, note we already multiplied that in never mind but uh, in inches you can cut off 21 and a half which is perfectly fine so again for the normal upper VHF repeater input and uh, output frequencies in the United States the best length is 21 and a half inches or 54 centimeters and I know most other regions in the world have different repeater frequencies, so you guys will have to do the math yourself. All right, the actual build process is very straightforward, and I'm not even going to show you, because uh, I'm confident that you'll be able to figure out how to uh, put a piece of wire on one of those ring terminals. It's not rocket science, and if you actually do have difficulties with it, just let me know, and I will help you with this. No worries at all. And you see that I bent this connector a little bit just makes life a whole lot easier to carry it around if you put it in here and uh, uh, it's difficult to do this through the viewfinder but anyway just uh, put it in there make sure it's snug that's all you gotta do and uh, your radio will perform so much better I mean uh, I will show you in a moment how much better but I can just recommend if you just build one of those go outside key up a repeater that was normally uh, just right at or uh, above the noise level for you at your location and just see the difference. Uh, I tried it myself on one of the Cabot Stars Club nets uh, the other week and uh, it was just amazing to see how uh, a few dB and uh, we'll see uh, again how many dBs uh, improvement in return loss will actually change your overall performance. Um, Another thing that I'd like to add, and like I just said, you need to calculate this for a relatively narrow uh, frequency area or bandwidth that you would like to operate on. Now most radios nowadays and most uh, repeaters are utilizing both the 2 meter and 70 centimeter band. You uh, do not have to choose which one of those two you want. You can use both bands, but you're going to have to do a little trick. You're going to have to build a tiger tail for your desired 2 meter frequency band and for your desired 70 centimeter or for your Americans 440 megahertz area and put them both on the radio. Yes, you can do that. You can put a stack as many tiger tails as you want to for the desired frequency range. So going back to this radio here, this one does 6 meters, 2 meters, 1.25 meters and Europeans should be unfamiliar with this band. It's an American only 222 megahertz band and uh, does 440. So you could put four tiger tails on here, no problem. Just at some point, uh, you may need to shorten the tiger tails just a little bit. Uh, cut off, I don't know, uh, one centimeter or so of each one of those tiger tails if you're really stacking four. Uh, simply, even though they're not resonant on, on the other bands, they, they will at least uh, interfere with them a little bit. You may have to experiment and see what best performance you're getting out of them at what length. It uh, can be a tedious prog uh, process if you don't have a spectrum analyzer or network analyzer available but it will pay off. But just for two meter and 70 centimeters, no problem. Just build two tiger tails, put them on there at the same time. And uh, well, that's really everything. And another thing I'd like to point out is this does not only work for amateur radio. This works for any radio with this type of antenna. Uh, it can be a commercial radio. If you have a handheld marine radio, when you go boating, it works very well for that as well and for just about anything else RC remote controls that sort of stuff no problem just make sure that you obey the laws in the country you're in uh, sometimes the effective radiated power is actually uh, regulated and the uh, manufacturers of equipment particularly when it comes to RC controls uh, factor quality losses in there intentionally to meet these uh, legal restrictions so if you put a tiger tail on there you may actually be over the legal limits 
uh, in the United States, the uh, laws to refer to would be uh, Part 15 of uh, 47 CFR, but in other countries, um, the rules may be a little bit stricter and uh, less defined, and I know in Germany it's really a pain in the rear to, uh, to figure out the laws around that, so be careful with that. And even though I don't know anybody that actually disputes the functionality and effectiveness of this tiger tail, I thought I'll quantize the data at hand and show you exactly how well it does perform. Uh, so this is the spectrum analyzer and uh, you see the stock antenna on top of the directional coupler in the middle and the tiger tail is attached to it quite obviously. Uh, what you see here is an almost, well not almost, it is near perfect SWR. Um, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, yes, our SWR is better than 1.01, 1 to 1 1.01. .01. That's with the tiger tail. Uh, you may know that the resonance frequency is a little bit below the normal amateur radio band, um, but this will have to do with my setup and not so much with the antenna. Um, I'm pretty sure when you hook it up to the radio, uh, the, the resonance frequency will fit much better because this antenna has been designed specifically for that radio and not for my test setup here with the spectrum analyzer and the directional coupler. Okay, but all we really care about is how does the characteristic of the antenna change when we remove the tiger tail and well to find out, let's do it. So uh, you, you can already see that the uh, spectrum analyzer is freaking out uh, because I'm putting my hands on the antenna and goofing around with stuff here and now you can see where the flat line is obviously with uh, this end being unconnected what it's representing right now is a horrible SWR which, mean, which means that all the power put into this port by the tracking generator gets reflected fully back to uh, to this device and the directional coupler couples out exactly that part, the reflected energy. So now let's hook up this uh, stock antenna of the Yaesu uh, VX8DR onto here and uh, we'll look at that. Uh, we see two things. Uh, part one is the resonance frequency is significantly lower than it was beforehand. Uh, let's see, we're 2 megahertz per division so uh, we, almost, we dropped about 7 to 8 megahertz down. That's of course a bad thing and you can assume the same to happen on your radio uh, even though the uh, absolute frequency range here is probably a little bit off because like I said this antenna has been designed for the radio not for the setup but the change in frequency uh, or resonance frequency will probably also be uh, present in your handheld radio. But more importantly we see that our SWR dropped it's not horrible, it's still uh, quite around uh, 20 dB return loss, which is an SWR of 1.20, which is still good, but 1.01 uh, is of course a whole lot better than 1.2. Uh, so we see the Tiger Tail uh, for less than 50 cents in materials, you can make a really effective enhancement, uh, which both gets you better transmit and receive characteristics and uh, this is exactly what we wanted to see and to prove and uh, I guess we did that very nice alright if you have any questions regarding the tiger tail just uh, send me an email drop your questions below in the comment section and I'll be happy to help you with this and I hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you subscribe and share this video with other friends amateur radio operators or whoever else might be interested in this see you next time